salute what's good welcome back the gen x media i ain't even gonna hold y'all y'all already know what type of time i'm on two hands on the nine what's that real nigga time so a few things quick synopsis right we're gonna talk about this audio that charla is saying is keefy d's grant grand jury testimony and diddy should be worried because 50 cent and willie d said he should be but that's neither here nor there. We're going to talk about K-Shine on Math Hoffa and the fallout about that. Easy to block Captain resurfacing and Birdman out of the blue during an interview with WAC 100. Speaking on Gilly the Kid after all these years. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to drop this. we be right back. You feel me? Let's get it. Check this out, right? I just got a couple questions. And hopefully y'all can answer them for me. I just got a couple questions. That's all. That's all. A couple questions. Asking for a friend. You feel me? So, explain this to me, right? <laughs> Gilly, years ago, was going ham on Birdman and Lil Wayne. We never heard this story before. It's not to say whether it's true or not. We don't know. I don't care. I just got a question for y'all. It is kind of convenient that the situation happens with Gilly and Hassan, and suddenly WAC 100 does an interview with Birdman where he speaks on Gilly. That's not strange to y'all. I'm just asking. Is it? Is it not? Okay. Let me know how y'all feel. It just seems strange to me. Let's move on. Easy to block Captain resurfaces, and, and, and he touched on a few things that we already knew and heard. The the, the person uh, that reached out to Tasha K without his permission had already released the statement that he said on the live. He touched on a few things, and I don't really, I'm not even really here to talk about the things that he touched on. Um, I didn't watch the whole thing. Just to be honest with y'all, I did not. Now, if there's anything interesting in there, we might cover it later. But, you know, I kind of see and understand what he's doing at this point in time, right? See, it seems like when something happened and things doesn't go his way, he lay low. Let the bloggers in the streets do all the talking to keep his name popping within the algorithm. And as soon as things get slow, he popped back up. They get his name popping back up in the algorithm again smart salute to him what y'all think i don't really give a fuck just rap nigga just rap you're a battle rapper just rap release some music i don't give a fuck about none of that blogging shit you're a rapper rap moving right along so k Sean was on math hoffa's my expert opinion he did a lot of talking about url Jay Black and his situation with NWX and DNA. Now, I don't have an opinion either way on any of those situations. That's between those people. My opinion is based on how y'all are using this situation to attack URL once again, talking about this is proof that they do bad business. DNA never said the contract was bad. DNA said that the contract that Kayshawn accepted contract would have been was the type of contract that they were signing back when URL was doing about four or five major events a year. That contract would be a good contract. But because at that point in time in the caffeine era, they was banging out a lot more events for content that that type of contract wouldn't be beneficial but Kayshawn didn't listen he needed the money up front and now he ended up still owing them a battle that's it he never said it was a bad contract but this is the type of shit y'all do to push the agenda now sticking on the topic of URL this case between them and Norbs somebody put out that the judge said that if the battle rap community found out how much URL was making, it would be bad for them. URL released a statement. So many links to the actual uh, court documents that I don't know why y'all keep continuing to lie 
when they always provide proof, especially when pertaining to the legal matter. Y'all need to stop. Just stop it. One thing before I leave this particular situation and get to the Diddy situation, right, is that I know everybody feel like Max Out 3 was a crazy event and, and, and all the battle rappers did very well. But what has always been strange to me is majority of the battle rappers on that card was many of the battle rappers that y'all all said y'all was tired of. Averb being one of them. Y'all said y'all didn't get Verb since he's been vegan Verb. Verb hasn't changed nothing about his style since he's been vegan. Not even in this battle. The only thing that he changed was the league and being in a blue room. And suddenly, y'all acting like he's the best in the world. To me, Verb has always been nice. Always been nice. It's just y'all hate for the URL. It's clouding y'all judgment when it comes to a whole lot of shit. But that's neither here nor there. Let's get down to business. Y'all been DMing me, emailing me about this Keefe D audio that's supposed to be grand jury testimony. Y'all are bugging. This is the same audio from 15 plus years ago that got him the initial proffer. What are we talking about here? But I'm just going to propose a couple of questions to y'all because we already covered this in the last video. And if you didn't see it, go watch it and check it out. But I'm going to add a little bit more to it because obviously I wasn't clear. So let's just say, let's just say this, right? No, 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 no. no. We ain't going to let's just say shit. We're going to stick to the evidence in the audio, the whole entire audio, because obviously y'all haven't listened to the whole entire audio. It's out there. The whole audio is out there in documentaries by itself on YouTube channels. Go listen to it in the audio. As I said before, he says they never received payment, not a half a payment, not a quarter of a payment, not the whole amount, not a half an amount. And in a case such as this, you need a transaction to take place. But let's just say the state of Nevada is not one of those states where you need a transaction to take place. In the same audio, this same person says out of their own mouth, the events that transpired that night happened by chance and circumstances based on the altercation that happened in the casino. That's all have video for. That's tangible. You can see it. Right. That's my second point. We can see that. We all can see it. There's no disputing that. Right. But let's just say, let's just say y'all right. <laughs> let's just say that, that y'all all right. And none of that means anything. And they do lock up Diddy. Any great shit, any good attorney will eat that apart based on the statement and the footage. Because intent is shown for the parties involved without Diddy ever offering a dime. And they will have a hard time proving that Diddy even offered this. They only have the word of what the court or the jury will see as a convicted felon. Saying that this is what this man said. It doesn't matter even if they can come up with 10 witnesses. No money ever exchanged hands. Last but not least, because of the amount of money, because it was in a different state and money would have had to have been transferred or transported to one or the other. It becomes a federal case because it was a million dollars. The feds never touched it because it's not even enough circumstantial evidence to charge or convict sean diddy combs but it's enough evidence there for the person who admitted to being in the vehicle and that's all it's about is to do something about a case where only two people that was in that car happened to still be alive y'all let me know what y'all think how y'all feel down in the comments i catch y'all next time and don't forget hit the motherfucking likes man participate and comment help this thing go because we all about Pushing and preserving the culture. Let's get it.